Welcome to sunny Florida. It is beautiful outside. It's so nice to see green and life. It's glorious. So much better than cold, dark, gloomy, snowy Ohio. I just landed in Jacksonville, Florida International Airport. Oh, probably an hour ago. It's just after 3 p.m. here on a Thursday. I'm in my rental car heading towards White Springs, Florida, right on the Suwannee River. More specifically, American Canoe Adventures. The owner, John, is going to be hooking me up with a shuttle, and I got about 50 miles ahead of me over the next two and a half days. Actually, day and a half. Today's pretty much gone. I'm hoping to get in on the trail maybe five or ten miles to be able to set up camp before dark, and as soon as I get there, I'm going to get all changed out of my traveling clothes and into my hiking clothes and I was fortunate to find some fuel at Walmart so I'm good to go there and I'm getting really excited to get on this trail and try to put down some quick miles tonight because uh, you know I'm gonna have a big big day tomorrow more on that to come soon as soon as we get on the trail I'll update you on all the details I'm finally on trail and boy does it feel good. You can see I'm in t-shirt and shorts. It's mid 60s, very comfortable hiking conditions right here along the Suwannee River. You can just barely see that out there. So today, tomorrow, and the third morning, I will be along a 50 mile stretch of the Suwannee River. I'm trying to make some quick miles here because it is 4.45, I got about an hour and a half to get some miles in tonight and find a good campsite before dark, hopefully, and enjoy the beautiful Suwannee River section in the warmth of Florida. My first close look at the Suwannee River. It's dead calm and not one bird is chirping. I hope that's not a bad sign because usually when you hear of the forest being deathly quiet with not even a bird or a squirrel. It means Bigfoot's in the area. Beautiful black water of the Suwannee River. This is just what I needed after a week of brutal cold snowy weather in Ohio. What a killer way to kick off the 2021 hiking season. I am so glad that the opportunity presented itself for me to come to Florida to do a section of the Florida Trail. I'm absolutely loving this trail so far. I'm using gut hook for navigation. The two sections I'm doing, I'm hoping are gonna be fairly dry. Well, I came to our very first camped area. Overlooking the Suwannee. Man, pretty nice. I'm only like two and a half miles in on the Florida Trail. Anybody need some sunglasses? So the details of my hiking plan for this trip are 45 to 55 miles, give or take, along the Suwannee River. And then I'm gonna be driving my rental car down to Jupiter Springs, Florida in the middle, right in the heart of Ocala National Forest. There, I will be meeting up with a fellow named Brian, who I met on a Facebook group called Florida Hikers or something like that. One of the Florida Hiker Facebook groups. And he is going to watch over my car there at Jupiter Springs and take me to Rodman Trailhead at the very top of Ocala National Forest. And it's a 70, 72 mile section. And if I can't get through the whole thing, you know, there's multiple early bailout points where he can come pick me up because I have two nights and three days on that trail. And I have to be in my rental car heading back to Jacksonville Airport by noon at the very latest so I can catch my flight home to Ohio. So that is the plan. Man, I got to tell you, I'm loving this. So nice. The older I get the less I like hiking in cold weather. And you know, I once made a video about how much I hate hiking in hot weather. <laughs> so in the middle of the summer when it's hot and humid in Ohio, I'm usually out kayaking 
kayak camping instead, or as a colonel calls it, hiking with your arms. So I've been talking to the old colonel on Marco Polo as he is plowing snow up in Ohio currently. So I was trying to figure out a way to get the colonel to join me on this trip, and he's very jealous of this hike. But here he is right here live watching me film for him back in Ohio on Marco Polo. And here was his response. Man, Miller, I'm so jealous. I am so seriously jealous. That looks gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I would give. That's amazing. Yes, it is amazing. I'm really trying to enjoy this beautiful sunshine right now because I might not be so fortunate the rest of this trip. There's a lot of rain and thunderstorms in the forecast over the next three days, four days. Man, I'm soaking it up right now. That's awesome. It's getting low in the sky. Shadows are getting long. Man, I'm going to have to bring the old Colonel down here and go kayaking. That is beautiful. Quick moving water. So on this adventure, I decided to bring the old Light AF Curve 35. I tried to get everything in my Joey, my Palante Joey, which I really like, but I just couldn't quite get my drone, my Mavic Mini drone in there, and my Helinox chair. I mean, I could, but once it was loaded down that much, it just wasn't comfortable. Uh, that pack is probably best to be under 15 pounds total weight. You know, I like the Joey better for back sweat because it rides up a little higher on your back and it's kind of narrower at the bottom and more rounded. The part that touches your back is a little rounded. So you have less surface area touching your back making you sweat. Um, you know, you get a little volleyball sized sweat spot on your back with the Joey, with the Curve 35, your whole back's gonna be wet. I'm not knocking the Curve 35, it's a great pack and it actually is more comfortable. The straps are by far more comfortable, especially once you're over 12 to 15 pounds in total pack weight. For lightweight running with just maybe a, a coat and snacks and water, uh, the Joey is hard to beat. But when it's loaded down for a backpacking trip, Curve 35 crushes it in comfort, especially on the shoulder straps. It's a great pack. It just makes your back sweat a lot. And like I mentioned, I do have the drone with me and the Helinox. And I always debate on whether to bring those items. They are definitely luxury items. They help make the trip a little more comfortable and maybe a little more exciting with the drone. Man, this would be a great place to fly it right now, walking along the river. Nice and wide open, but as much as I want to fly it right now, the sun's really low in the sky, so I'd probably get a lot of sun glare on the on the drone camera. And I'm trying to get a lot more miles in yet before it gets dark to get to a certain campsite I'm looking for. So I don't really have time to stop and fly the drone right now, but we'll try to get it out tomorrow at 5:50 p.m. My daylight is limited. So, I'm in a rush to get away from this noisy highway and get down the trail a couple miles more before setting up camp and hopefully I can still see. Uh oh, where's the trail at? I see an orange blaze down there. I'll come right back here. All right, I'm crossing the river the wrong way. <laughs> I'm on the railroad tracks. You know, there was a walk plank right there but I just now realized that it wanted to take me across the bridge on Interstate 41. But I'll join right back up on the trail over there. This is kind of freaky, but that's all right. There's the Suwannee River. Wow, it's gorgeous. Currently at White Springs, US 41 entrance. Onward. You know, I was thinking, I might just night hike. This is like one of the easiest trails ever to navigate and to hike on. It's like flat, entirely flat as a pancake. I had one little hill of about 50 feet of elevation gain 
once along the river and I didn't even break a sweat. So I'm thinking about hiking two more hours maybe. I don't even think I'm gonna make a fire tonight. I'm just gonna hike and try to get some more miles in. And if I find a good campsite here in the next couple miles, I'll may, I might stop, but if I don't, I'm gonna hike into the darkness at least till eight. Um, Cause I'm not tired, I'm not worn out. I've been on a plane and in a car all day. So it's like, why not do some night hiking? It's the perfect opportunity to do it because I mean, look at this trail. I mean, it does not get any easier than that. Worst case scenario, I can set up my tent right in the middle of the trail. Something I failed to mention is that I am sleeping in my duplex for this trip. Uh, if I had a nice under quilt, I may have considered hammock camping, but uh, it takes up too much, too much space in my pack. It's a little heavier than my duplex sleeping system with the, oh, the Nemo Tensor air pad. Well, it is just about pitch black out. I can turn my lighting way up and it looks like there's still light in the sky, but there's really not. It's 635 and I'm gonna be coming into a town area and then no good camping away from that town area or other highways for probably another four to six miles. So it's getting pretty dark. So I'm gonna get camp set up, maybe get a good fire started. A lot of dead wood on the ground. Well, I'm getting ready to turn in for the night. Got my duplex all set up there behind me. There you go. I think you can see it now. I only made it about seven miles down the trail and realized that I needed to stop because I was at a place where I was able to get water and had some flat spots to set up camp. And if I would have continued on, it would not have uh, worked out. I would have had to go late into the night to find the next good camping spot with water. So this is gonna make do tonight and, and enjoying some packet gourmet right now. Beef bolognese, I think that's how you say it. Packet gourmet, pretty good. Planning on putting in a big day tomorrow, minimum 30 miles but I think it's gonna rain, so it might make for some harder miles. But we'll see how it goes. We'll catch you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, day two on the Florida Trail. Just about 7 a.m. Just enjoying a cup of coffee here. It looks pretty dark out, but it's actually uh, almost daylight. It's just inside the tent here with the light on me. It looks really dark. I was hoping to uh, get through most of the day without rain, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be that fortunate. So, probably be walking in and out of rain most of the day, but that's all right. At least it's not a heavy downpour. I can deal with the, the light sprinkles we have going on right now. As soon as I get my coffee finished up here, I'm going to grab a bar, pack the tent up, and hit the trail. Hoping to make some big miles today. I slept pretty good last night. Um, it took me a while to fall asleep, but once I fell asleep, I think I was out cold for six or seven hours without ever waking up. So, pretty happy with how well I slept on in the old duplex on the Nemo Tensor. Pretty comfy. I don't even know why I brought my trekking poles. I have such a habit of just always having them when I'm hiking, but they're not needed on this trail at all. I think I'm just gonna pack them up and put them in my pack. Man, am I lucking out on the rain right now. I actually see some blue sky. Look at that. Just west of here, a half hour. The forecast was calling for a 100% chance of rain all day today. Man, I'm so blessed to have a beautiful dry walk right now. It is so peaceful out here. It's just what I needed. I've only seen one person on the trail. Yesterday, 
oh, I don't know, after I've been on the trail for an hour, I walked by a guy with his dog. But other than that, if you come through here during the weekdays, I imagine you won't see very much foot traffic. But I know there's a lot of foot traffic out here because I can see the footprints in the sand, uh, bike tracks, and it's well matted down everywhere. So I know this trail gets a lot of use. But not so far since I've been out here, and I'm loving it. And I can hear the roar of traffic off in the distance. But other than that, it is very calm and peaceful out here. Currently walking through the city of White Springs, which is actually where my car is parked. Right up ahead here to the left, my car is parked at American Canoe Adventures. So that makes me feel like I didn't get very far. Eight and a half miles away from where I started my hike, I'm finally back to my car. A long way to go. Right there is the canoe livery where my car is parked. That'd be awesome to see a gator and a bear on this trip. So Florida has over 1,000 springs and we are here at one in particular that I've seen on other videos. You can see there's a lot of history about the spring. They, they said it had magical waters. Wow. Doesn't look very magical right now. <laughs> Looks pretty disgusting. But at one time, this was a very, very popular place. Finally out of the city of White Springs and the campground uh, that's right here in right White Springs and back on the Suwannee River. It's right here to my left. And I can still hear traffic noise getting louder and louder because I am approaching I-75. I can hear it up in the distance a couple miles away. I can't wait to get through that and back out into pure nature with peace and quiet. Things are going really well. The weather is holding off. It's actually very pleasant. Feels like it's uh, low 60s, maybe even creeping up into the mid 60s because I'm getting pretty warm. But this is the way the trail looks most of the time. I had about a mile dirt road back there a while back. But a uh, majority of the trail just looks like this. Very flat and easy to navigate, but very beautiful at the same time. Not sure what's up with all the colorful pennant flags. Some more down there by the river. There's the trail. Let's walk up here and see if there's a little overlook onto the river. Oh yeah, with some beautiful white sandy beaches. Oh man, very nice. You can hear the roar of I-75 out that way. A view from the next bank over. Wow, it's pretty. Oh, a nice breeze. Oh, that feels good. My back is so sweaty. Woo. I don't know if you can hear the roar of I-75 in front of me. Maybe not now with the breeze. I'll stop. There, can you hear that now? It's gotta be less than a mile away. Anyway, I was thinking about something while I was hiking. I'm only like nine miles in for the day. Like 16 for the whole trip. For me, part of the enjoyment for back of backpacking is to push myself and to try to get to a certain mileage or a destination by a certain time. And I have pretty tight time limits on these trails that I'm doing. So I have to keep moving and I have to go for 10 or 12 hours a day to see everything I want to see. Now I know that's not everybody's cup of tea and I do like to enjoy my backpacking trips, but this is part of the enjoyment for me is pushing myself and see how far and fast I can go. But at the same time, I do get tired and I do want to stop and fly the drone, cook some lunch, you know, all these things that you can't do during an FKT. So I do still plan to do all those, but uh, I'm still trying to get down the trail fairly quickly at the same time. Time to 
time to filter some water. There's so much tannin in this water, it looks like tea. Coffee. Wait till you see this stuff in my bottle. Time for a new Sawyer squeeze. This one's really starting to slow down. I back flushed it a bunch of times before I came on this trip. There, you can see how dark that is. My goodness. Look, <laughs> tea colored. It tastes great. There's no off taste to it at all. Just a lot of tannin. Looks like we just go under the bridge. The overpass, that's easy. Very happy to be leaving that noise behind. Wow, that is terrible. And there's a campsite close to this. Who would ever want to camp close to that? Gee whiz. Well, I got a lot of miles ahead of me yet. I'm only 10 miles in, hoping to get 25 to 30 today. My goodness, that's almost magical looking. Check out that massive tree with all the growth on the limbs. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, I am starving. It is high noon, and I've been looking for a place that has a picnic table or just a nice flat area with a view. I finally found it. Perfect spot for lunch break, right under this giant tree with moss all over it, overlooking the beautiful Suwannee River. All right, I'm gonna set my Helinox chair up, cook me some food. Oh, I think it's time for a little update. I am 17 miles in for the day, and it's, oh, about 20 after 1. So, still got a lot of hiking ahead of me. I did look at the forecast, and it looks like it's going to rain probably around 3 or 4 o'clock. And 100% by 5 or 6. So, I either got to make the decision to try to get my miles in and hike in the rain, um, or just call it quits wherever I'm at before the downpour starts. So I guess we'll figure that out when it gets here. But anyway, I just uh, was hiking with a couple guys, one from Tennessee and one from Cleveland, Ohio. They are through hiking. And they passed me while I was taking a lunch break. And then I caught up with them and I hiked with them for about a 20, 30 minutes. And the one from Tennessee, I never did catch their names, but uh, they don't really follow YouTube at all. so. I didn't really talk about that with him or think it was necessary to put him on camera. But anyway, uh, the Tennessee guy uh, has done the AT and most of the PCT and now the Florida Trail. So he's got some hikes under him, that's for sure. But it was uh, nice to see some people and have some uh, communication with someone else besides me <laughs> in the camera. I passed uh, another set of through hikers going Sobo a couple hours ago and another older couple section hiking the entire Florida Trail. So I've I've seen a few people today. It's been kind of nice. But not too many people. So I've had plenty of time of solitude as well. It's pretty interesting rock formations there. Rock bluffs. Oh, I just walked up on this structure. It's not on the Gut Hook app. Man, what an awesome place to get out of the weather if it was bad. I don't know if you're allowed to stay in there or not. Pretty cool. Comes with a little picnic table and a nice view. 
that way and the river right there over the hill. That would be a fantastic place to stay if it was quitting time. But I still got at least 10 miles to go, if not 15. Let's get rolling. Another fabulous place to get out of the weather and eat lunch right here on the Florida Trail, right along the river. Another awesome place. And it's connected by a boardwalk to this big screened in building here, which is also connected to another boardwalk to a second house. That is spectacular. Now we're walking. This is all private property. There's the river, the trail, and then a fence. Man, that is awesome. Wow. You know what? I just saw a water spigot back here. I wonder if it's on. Gosh, they got an electric fence. <laughs> they don't want you trespassing. I don't know if this water works or not. It does. I'm gonna fill my jugs up. You be a good dog, okay? Yeah, you're a good dog. You smell my beef jerky, don't you? You smell my beef jerky. <laughs> you be a good dog. <sighs> Man, they do have a hill in Florida. <sighs> First big hill in Florida. Almost 100 feet of gain. Wore me out. <laughs> I thought that dog was going to attack me. I looked like a pretty ferocious pit bull type of dog I'm not sure but uh, made it up on top of this hill probably seriously 80 feet off the river I imagine it's one of the highest climbs on the Florida Trail and after 20 miles even a little hill like that winds me pretty good but man we got some beautiful scenery here a little change of scenery some palm tree looking trees and uh, like a field of pine trees planted in rows and the grass is mowed between them. That's pretty. Oh, I'm definitely wearing down. Even though I'm only at 20 miles. I, <laughs> I, I think back to when I did my FKT on the Susquehanna Trail and at 12 hours I was at 44 miles. How in the world did I do that? Gosh, I... I mean, I haven't been hiking as much lately, but I'm running five to 10 miles three days a week, if not four days a week. So I, I thought I, that would help me maintain my uh, endurance and stamina and cardio for a long distance hiking. But I think unless you have a pack on and are hiking 10, 15 miles plus every other day, um, you're gonna start losing what you have. There's no way in heck I could go out and do a FKT right now. Whew. It's so nice to see the green grass and life. Wow, it's beautiful. It's very comfortable out, a light breeze. I mean, it couldn't be any better. So I just thought of something else I forgot to mention. When I was talking to those fellas that were through hiking the Florida Trail that I passed, oh, I don't know, two miles ago, um, I was asking them about Osceola or Osceola National Forest. I'm not sure the proper pronunciation. But uh, that's where I was originally going to go before the Suwannee section because they're kind of connected by uh, a short six mile road walk. Boy, am I glad that I chose not to do that section in Osceola National Forest because they said they were walking in water continually. And the three or four days they were walking through there uh, or whatever it was, it was the time it was like 34 degrees. Oh, it had to be brutal. That was where I originally was gonna go, and then I saw some videos of people trudging through the water. I was like, uh-uh. Let's take a look at Ocala instead, and Suwannee. And I think I made the right decision. A lot of Spanish moss through here. That is pretty. Wow, look at this beach. This is beautiful.
What a beautiful beach. I don't believe it. The sun has made an appearance. Wow, I did not expect that. I'm supposed to be getting dumped on by rain right now. They obviously got the forecast wrong and I'm hoping it continues to be wrong for at least two more hours. I want to finish hiking around 5.30 and set up camp and enjoy an hour of daylight before it gets dark. Maybe start fire and I'm definitely ready to rest. I'm at mile 22. Gonna try to get to mile 30. Or, you know, give or take, depending on where I find a good campsite. But I'm just happy that this, it's not raining and I can see sunshine. My goodness. It is lovely. Helping me really enjoy the trail. Very comfortable. Even though my feet are sore and I'm ready to call today, this makes for some great hiking. Some sort of old bridge here. Full of graffiti. Lots of graffiti. Huh. Interesting. Oh, oh my goodness, it's all the way down. Check that out. That is awesome. I mean, I'm not a fan of graffiti, but on an old abandoned bridge that no one uses or can see, why not? Man, that's pretty cool. All right, I know where I'm at now. I remember reading about this and seeing it on YouTube, this graffiti bridge. I forget the name of it, but I'm on top of it now and there's a graffiti all over it. Holy moly. I have definitely never seen this, this much graffiti in all my life. That's incredible. And the Suwannee River. I've been walking on this sandy road well, for about a half mile. I think I only have another half mile to go before we go back into the woods next to the river. But I'm at mile 25. I'm gonna try to make it to 30. I think I can. It's uh, it's just after four o'clock, so I wanna be done by six, so I have time to set up before dark. That is the goal. Things are going well. Still, still see a little bit of blue sky here and there, but it's mostly cloudy, and that's all right, as long as the rain holds off. Well, I ended up calling it a day about 5.15 p.m. tonight because I could see dark clouds coming, and the second I got off the trail and started setting my tent up, it started sprinkling, so it was a good call. I really wanted to get that 30 miles in, but I ended up at 27 and a half, so pretty good day. I'm actually more sore than I, and I ever thought I would be after a 27 mile day. I know to a lot of you that sounds like a lot of miles, but uh, you know, I didn't think it would be bad for me at all, but it was tough, you know. After 15 miles, you start wearing down. After 20, it's, it's hard. But uh, I'm hoping I sleep well tonight and wake up well rested and ready to tackle some more miles. I had some really good peak refuel uh, dehydrated meal tonight. It was uh, sweet rice and pork, I think. My gosh, that was good. I could eat that at home as a regular meal. So highly recommend the, the peak refuel sweet rice and pork. I think that's what it's called. Very tasty. It only takes one cup of water for two servings of 800 calories. So um, that filled me up. Well, I'm going to turn in early and get my beauty sleep. Good night. Good morning. Day three on the Florida Trail has begun. Just doing my morning routine. It's about six o'clock. The rain held off again. It did sprinkle a little bit ago. All for maybe 15, 20 minutes. But a very light sprinkle. So I'm going to get packed up here in a few minutes and hit the trail. We got us a little waterfall at 7 a.m. I believe all these streams and rivers we're crossing are originating from springs. And it flows into the Suwannee. Look at that beautiful beach over there. Wow. Pretty dark out here still at 7 a.m. And 
I'm always torn in the morning when I'm in my tent in my nice warm quilt whether to sleep in and let the sunshine wake me up because it is hard to get out of a nice warm quilt in a dry tent but there's something about getting out on the trail in the dark before nature comes alive all around me and enjoying that peace and quiet and serenity of nature in the forest before it, it wakes up but now it's all coming alive around me and, and it's it's awesome i love it so yeah it might be tough pry myself out of the tent but it's always worth it to enjoy this early morning on the trail breaking trail because <laughs> i'm getting webs in my face but they're not bad so i have 11 miles to gibson state park which is where my shuttle is picking me up i'm hoping to be out by 10 10 30. you know it always amazes me at how well the body can repair itself with a good night's sleep i felt rough last night i'm not gonna lie my feet were sore and i was tired but uh, a good night's sleep does wonders i woke up refreshed and renewed and ready to crush some miles check out these little camp cabins right on the trail pretty cool but it's a pretty awesome place got these little screen in porches and pavilions all around nice little campground it doesn't get much better than this for walking conditions it's like a soft padding of pine needles pine duff is that what it's called Well, folks, I'm about ready to enter Gibson State Park, where I will be concluding part one of my journey along the Florida Trail. My shuttle is going to be meeting me here soon to take me back to my car, and I will be making my way down to Ocala National Forest for part two of my 100 miles on the Florida Trail. The Suwannee River section did not disappoint. It was awesome. I highly recommend it. And if you are ever interested in hiking this same 45-mile stretch that I did along the Suwannee River, I will leave links down in the description box of my starting and ending locations as well as the shuttle service that I used for this trip. So this is not the end. Part two is coming up here real soon. I will put that up here in the cards once it is uploaded as well as in the description box if you want to check out that video. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and coming along with me on the Florida Trail. And until next time, I'm Jason Wish, wishing you a great time on your next adventure. Oh, we're pretty fortunate in the rain. This is about a bad Yeah, no storm. Just looking at it, right?